Unfortunately, there is a big conflict that has erupted between Pakistan and India. So this is ongoing issues and escalations, but now there's fear of real war occurring between both of those big countries. And this is problematic on, on many different grounds, but it's also an opportunity for us to think about and talk about how AI is being used in this major conflict that is between two big, big, powerful nations. So when we think about this and when looking into this, we can see that AI is used in many different ways because both of these big, powerful countries have been investing into AI for several years already. So major investments, we're talking millions and millions of dollars. So now AI has been starting to be incorporated into both of their militaries in different ways. So huge AI use, and this gives us an opportunity to talk about it amongst ourselves here. But if you're an instructor, this is also a prime opportunity to now bring this up to your students because this is a current event and this is a powerful way to bring them in to talk about AI use. So this is a great way to further develop their AI literacy. This is important on many different levels of AI literacy because we, we have aspects of, of awareness, meaning that, hey, AI is here and it's being used in many ways to include in the military, to include in these political issues in this, in this situation, this conflict uh, situation. Additionally, critical thinking. We need to be critically analyzing what's going on and seeing how this is affecting society, seeing how it's being used, and then making decisions on our own. Is this right? Is this wrong? Is this morally correct? What are the implications? How is this going to affect other countries? And what is right? What is wrong here? So I'm just going to discuss a couple of different aspects as far as how AI is actually being used in this big conflict. So both Pakistan and India invested millions of dollars the thing is that India is a much larger country as, as far as their GDP, so they have much more money and they've been investing a lot more into AI. So AI is very much being integrated and they use it in many different ways. A big way is for surveillance. They have lots of different AI surveillance systems along their borders with Pakistan. So we've talked about uh, th this type of AI system before. Uh, Skyla is one where they use an AI and it monitors video feeds and then can detect certain movements, can detect weapon systems, and then alert those individuals to say, hey, there's an issue here, you, you might need to check it out because we're talking about huge amounts of border to cover. You wouldn't have enough people to be watching enough video feeds, so an AI can greatly assist in that way. So that's really powerful and there's different ways of implementing that, whether that's for a, a civilian system or a military system like this. So that's a powerful implementation. Another big one is drones. We're very familiar, we've seen that. That's also being used in the Ukraine-Russian war. But here, this is very massive for, for both sides. Both sides have gotten into drones and using AI drone systems. This ties in with lots of different aspects of how AI is being used because a majority of AI use in the military deals with battlefield management. So that means that AI can process large amounts of information to give you a better understanding of what's going on on the battlefield, on the area of interest, so you can get the information faster, process it better and easier and quicker so that you can make more informed decisions uh, on both sides. This is the, the, the major way that AI is being used, but then it's also being used in other ways because we have things like robot dogs, uh, autonomous uh, vehicles, you know, autonomous tanks, autonomous jets, all these types of things. But then we get into the area of what's called uh, lethal autonomous vehicles, uh, lethal aut autonomous weapons. So law is, is, uh, is one of the acronyms for this. So this is lethal autonomous weapon systems. And the problem with that is that with these type of autonomous weapon systems, an AI is making decisions. An AI is choosing whether to engage or not to engage. So that's what the autonomous aspects of these weapon systems mean. So that's a big question for us to ponder. Do we want to allow this type of thing? There's lots of international debates about this because of the, the morality of it, right? If we have a robot dog and there's a weapon system attached to it and it's making decisions on its own whether to engage or not, man, that, that's changing warfare completely than what it's been in the past. 
there's lots of things to consider. Yes, it could save lives, but it could also take lives. And do we want to have that type of AI system? Um, there's been uses of this already. Um, missile systems that simply go around an area to monitor and then they detect, hey, there's the enemy vehicle. I'm just going to fire and then the missile goes in there. So a human doesn't monitor it. The human sends the missile and then if it could detect that type of enemy system, well, then it engages without even a human authorizing it because it's pre-authorized based off of the information given to the AI. So that's being used, that's already has been used for several years now, but now it's escalating even more to more different systems such as with drones, such as with robot dogs with weapon systems or autonomous tanks, lots of different implementations for this. So that, that's sort of a, a big question on an ethical level, but this is going to continue to go on more and more because now we're thinking about more systems, more powerful missiles, even nuclear capabilities do we ever want to allow an AI system to control that? These are big questions for us to ponder because the AI system would be faster, more accurate, but there are these issues, moral issues, as far as giving authority over to the AI. A lot of things to really think about. And this, this conflict could cause lots of other issues because these are both nuclear powered uh, countries, right? Both Pakistan and India have nuclear weapons. So we definitely don't want an escalation where this could spill into something uh, really catastrophic. So lots of ways that AI is being used. And another big one would be informational warfare, right? PSYOPs, psychological operations here, where AI is being used to create images, to create videos. Uh, here's a news article. There's a really interesting article that talks about how Pakistan has been using AI for spying and subversion by creating fake profiles of females to then try to what's called a honey trap male soldiers from the Indian army to get them to express different information or some sort of uh, data that would help the Pakistani army, as well as by having these AI generated images and profiles, then when they connect with a soldier, they can have them download additional malware and things like that to gain even more information. What's funny here is that, so in response, the Indian army has deployed artificial intelligence to fight against this to to monitor accounts and to try to counteract all these things by having AI deployed to, to search for these things and then to counter them. They're also using the AIs to create simulations to enhance the cybersecurity of the Indian Army overall. It's just really interesting that one AI is used to start this with the fake profiles, fake images, and then another AI from a counter army is using the AI to fight against it by using simulations for training and also for observations and security purposes. An AI versus an AI. This just demonstrates the many different ways that AI can be used for psychological operations for propaganda. And the importance for all of us to see that yes, critical thinking and understanding how and knowledge about how AI can be used in both good and bad ways. Very important for us to fight against deception through the use of AI. And that's just sort of what the news has picked up on, but there's lots of things going on, meaning that both sides create social media accounts that are controlled by AI and then counter what the other country does. So there's lots of AI being used to analyze this information and then decide what to do, generate video, generate images, generate audio, all sorts of different ways AI is being used for analysis and development as well. Again, we have to think about the proper use and is this ethical, is this not? I'm sure there's going to be all sorts of different uh, things that come up with the UN as far as violating international laws because there are sorts of all sorts of different issues going on here with the, the use of AI. So prime opportunity to discuss this, prime opportunity to bring this up in class or to discuss with your friends, uh, your peers. AI literacy is a big part of this because we need to understand what is AI, how it's being used, what are the moral implications of this, really critically thinking about this because again, this is affecting our society. So I look forward to your comments to see what, what people think of this and then we can develop from there. And remember, learning is for life. Thank you, everyone. Please don't forget to like and share, subscribe, 
so that we can continue to develop together.